All right, now we're at the soldering station ready to do the uh, capacitor replacement on this board. Um, as we had mentioned in the previous video, on the 215Ts, there are two power supply boards that could possibly be in the unit. So you do need to make sure that you open up your unit, uh, verify which power supply board you have before you order the replacement parts because the capacitors are very much different on the two. Um, okay. First thing you need to do, of course, you have your dead power supply board. You need to have your replacement capacitors that are going to populate the new board. You need a pair of diagonal cutters to cut off the capacitor leads once they've been soldered to the board. You need desolder wick to remove the bad solder. You need solder and a basic soldering iron. Um, first thing we need to do, of course, is remove the bad capacitors off the board. Um, so we'll do that with the soldering iron and the desolder wick. To get to the capacitors on this board, you need to remove this plastic insulation shield. It's held on by basically like little plastic rivets. You can squeeze the top with your diagonal cutters. Don't cut all the way through because you need to re replace this when you're finished. But if you just squeeze in on them, they will poke back through the board. And then this RF shield will come right off. Remove those four. And then we can remove the RF shield. Like I said, just keep that so that you can put it back on when we're finished. Now, to remove the capacitors off the board, as I was saying, you use the desolder wick, which is basically a copper braid with solder flux in it to help the solder flow smooth. And what you'll do is you find the capacitors that you're going to replace, find on the back side of the board where the contacts are, put the desolder wick on top, press your soldering iron on top of that, and when the solder melts, it will be wicked up or absorbed into the copper braid. You may have to move the copper braid around just a little bit to make sure that it makes a clean connection and clears up all the solder. Once it does, we go to the next one. Again, heat the solder and let it get absorbed by the wick. And then once we've done that, you can just grab a hold of the capacitor and it will come right off the board. Um, so we have, on this particular board, there is six capacitors, 47 microfarad. These two and the one in the back are 33 microfarad. The two taller ones are 820 microfarad. So we'll just remove those. takes a few minutes to do the repair on these boards. It's well worth it. These are very nice monitors with the DVI, VGA, and um, component, uh, component video on them. Very nice monitors. Um, so it's well worth a few minutes of your time to do the repair. And in about 85% of the time, this is the problem on the monitors when you have uh, power issues, either not powering up, taking a long time to uh, display a picture, flashing power lights, and no picture. Uh, all of those are indications of a failure in the power supply board uh, that resulted from the capacitors. It really depends on how bad the capacitors have failed as to which one of the symptoms that you get when they first start failing is when you get the flashing um, or wavy picture uh, as it progresses then you will get to the uh, point where the uh, picture may take you know instead of initially when you first got the monitor it would power on immediately and you would have a picture uh, when the capacitors start failing it may take 20-30 seconds to start showing a picture and that will get progressively longer 
and longer until it just will not power up at all where the capacitors cannot hold the charge enough even to get the power supply going. So when you start seeing the you know, warning signs of failing power supplies, might as well go ahead and uh, do the repair on it. It's just going to get worse. And we have one last capacitor that's the small one here. the old capacitors removed from the board. Time to populate with the new ones. Now if you notice on the power supply boards where the capacitors came off of, there's a circle with one side shaded and then a little dark like semicircle on one end. That is the negative side of the capacitors and each one shows that. When you look at the capacitor itself, one side is going to have a gray stripe with little negative signs. That is the negative terminal of the capacitor. That's the side that's going to go into the hole and the shaded portion of the circle. Very easy to do that. You only have two pins. So just poke that through. When the leads come out the other side, fold them to the side a little bit just so that the capacitor won't fall back through the hole. And then we'll go through and replace the rest of the capacitors. Those two. Fold the back. For the sake of speed on the video, we went ahead and removed all of the capacitors since we're f so familiar with doing the power supply. Um, you may want to uh, do them one at a time, take one off, replace it with the new capacitor, take the next one off, replace it so that you don't forget which one goes in which location. Alright, now that we have the capacitors physically on the board, now we need to mount them electrically and just do that with the soldering iron and the solder. Uh, just put a little bit of Put your soldering iron on the terminal, give it just a couple of seconds, then touch your solder to it. The solder will melt and should flow smoothly around the lead that protrudes from the board. Do that to the next one, and the next one. You want to have enough solder to go around the board, but not just a big lump of solder. Kind of, It should look very much like the other solder joints on the other components that remain on the board. If you get too much solder, you can use the desolder wick to remove it. Um, while we're also talking here, you do need to make sure that you use the right capacitors for the repair. They need to be low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance, high temperature, and high ripple current because of the operation of the switched mode power supplies if you put in the wrong type of capacitors, they will fail very shortly and can damage some of the other components on the boards when they fail if they're not the ones that are designed for use in this type of circuitry. So do make sure that you get the right ones to prevent you know, future problems. Uh, now that we have the capacitors installed, you use your diagonal cutters and just cut off the remaining parts of the legs that come through the board. flush down to the top of the solder so that they don't short out. Alright, now we have a fully rebuilt power supply board. Be sure to reinstall the insulation shield so that it doesn't short out to the chassis. Had a runaway capacitor here. Alright, now we have the board repaired and we'll take it back over to the monitor install it and verify the operation of the monitor.